Hi, I'm Jiro, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Now, last time I said that Yuri was acting a little bit more like my friend Yuko than Yukiri, than she was acting like Yukiri anymore. So I said I was going to try to have Yuko come in and read her lines from now on, unless she really starts sounding like Yukiri. So, from now on, here's Yuko, unless I change her back to Yukiri. Hopefully you'll be able to tell the difference. Come on, Yuko, do your thing. Welcome back, Jiro. Uh, hi, Yuko. I'm not sure if it's me or if it's y Yuko's expression, but the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. Uh, um... Yuko glances over her shoulder, looking around the room. Mitsuki is reading manga at a desk, and surprisingly, Kizana isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuko takes my arm and pulls me to the corner of the room. About yesterday, I... I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before, and something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Mitsuki as well. Yuko, I'm happy that you were considerate and apologized. You don't have to worry too much. Even though I've only been here a couple days, I could tell something was off yesterday. Maybe we're just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I had already decided that there's no way you can be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Uh, um... Jiro... Don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. And I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything is a little bit brighter with you around, and... Uh... Sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Hey, have you guys seen Kizana? Uh... No, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man! Yuko, I'm guessing you haven't either? Yuko is clearly taken aback by how calmly Mitsuki is addressing her. N no I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Uh, um... Mitsuki, uh, about yesterday... I, I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So... Yuka, what the heck are you talking about? Did you say some- did you do something yesterday? Huh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about little things, aren't you? B but I'll accept your apology anyway if it helps you feel better about it. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear since I was always afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't hate you. <laughs> well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Mitsuki turns to me. You're still on trial, though. Hey. Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Well, Mitsuki was. I, I was not! <laughs> what, what took you so long anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Kizana. <laughs> Don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good yet. Still, that must require a lot of dedication. So, I'm still impressed. <laughs> well, thanks, Yuko. You should play something for us sometime. <laughs> That's... Kizana looks at me. Well, I am working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Jiro. Kizana smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I was hoping that I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Kizana was referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not... not really. I choose not to bring up any, 
I choose not to bring up anything that the three of us talked about. Besides, Mitsuki has already run off into the closet. Jiro, um, since your compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you would like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. Uh, I suppose so. I don't think I could say no to you after that after you gave that book to me. Well, I guess I need to make sure Mitsuki isn't waiting for me. Yeah, because I wrote the poem for Mitsuki. I wanted to see her again. After we finished reading yesterday, she... She's fine! She's reading over there, see? Don't think about her so much. She's used to being ignored. Come on, we're going over there. Uh, that's a little forceful. What's the story about, anyway? Well, mm, I look at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous-looking eye symbol on the front cover. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison, and the people trapped there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood, but the facility gets even worse, and they start selectively ble breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to- uh Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. But anyway, I I'm really into it. The book, I mean. N not the thing about the limbs. That's kind of- that's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuko made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came out of nowhere. Uh... Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Jiro? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuko is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. Yeah, that's the Yuko I know. It's just that this kind of story... It's the kind that challenges you to look at life from a strange new perspective. Well, now she's sounding a little bit like Yukiri, but I'm not gonna call Yukiri back in here just for this. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless anyway. Then suddenly... I'm... I'm rambling, aren't I? Well, good thing I didn't call Yukiri back because everything she just said was way more Yuko. I thought she was gonna start analyzing the book, but instead she just started being nihilistic. Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, my whole body gets incredibly- I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please start stop me if I start talking too much. That's- I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Uh, that's- well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Yes! I mean, you don't have to, but- <laughs> what are you saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieve the book that I'd put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuko's. Uh, yeah? Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuko means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing, maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuko is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry! I was just bathing in the feeling of your body heat! Yuko, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I... I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuko's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Uh, I suppose so. Yuko timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Uh, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Oh, she looks pretty. Uh, Yuko takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuko slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer th together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuko's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Huh? To turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuko's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. 
I yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuko no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she's finished the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. Dude, you need to get laid if you think that's an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuko? This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Uh-huh. No, no, I, I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. Really? I was just thinking the way she second guesses things she says and all that. Uh, oh, that's what you were talking about. Sorry. I thought you meant something else about her. Something else? N never mind. We didn't even get that far yet. So I don't know why that came into my head. <laughs> Yuko, are you feeling all right? Huh? Yuko's been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Yuko puts her hands on her chest as if to feel her heartbeat. I, I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine. I just need some water. Alright, don't push yourself. Jeez, I hope I'm not intimidating her that much. Poor thing, she must be really shy. Yuko stands up and practically rushes out of the classroom. What on earth was that about? Yeah, the Yuko I know is pretty shy too. She always gets nervous around me. Jiro? Did something happen just now? Huh? I have no idea. Yuko is acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything? Sorry, I can't say I do. Are you worried about her? Oh, no, not really. I was just making sure that you didn't do anything to her. N no nothing <laughs> Don't worry. I believe you, silly. Yuko just does this sometimes, so it's nothing alarming. All right, if you say so. She didn't do that last time. Anyway, why don't we start sh with sharing our poems with each other? Man, Kizana's so concerned about her friends, it's nice. She's always checking on them. Huh? Shouldn't we wait for Yuko? Well, she might be a while, so I just figured we'd get started without her. Is that okay? We kind of out of an odd number of people, but I guess. Yeah, I was just asking. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. Okay. Um, I still want to date Kizana more than anyone else in this room. Hi again, Jiro. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that, as long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Kizana. Alright! Great job, Jiro. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. Uh, I didn't. I wrote a cutesy poem. Like, you- I have it on video. There is video evidence. You guys saw that? You guys saw me write a cutesy poem. Like, go back to the last video and check the ending. I wrote a poem for Mitsuki. I wrote a cute poem. But now it's just forcing me to have picked Yuko for some reason? I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuko likes this kind of writing, right? Um, the poem I wrote? I doubt Yuko likes that, because I wrote something cutesy and stupid. <laughs> writing that's full of imagery and symbolism? Sometimes I feel like Yuko's mind is just totally detached from reality. I don't mean like th that like it's a bad thing, though. But sometimes I get the impression that she's just totally given up on people. She spends so much time in her own head that it's probably a much more interesting place for her. But that's why she gets so happy when you treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think she's used to being indulged like that. She must be really starved for social interaction, so don't blame her for coming on a little strongly. Like earlier. I think if she gets too stimulated, she ends up withdrawing and looking for alone time. Suddenly, the door opens. Yuko! I-I'm back. Did I miss anything? Not really. Well, we all started sharing our poems with each other. Huh? Already? I, I i'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize. We still have plenty of time, so I'm more glad that you took all the time you needed. Alright. Um, thanks, Kizana. I suppose I should go get my poem now. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this turned out, so this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me. Oh, I've seen this one before, but it's like got different punctuation. The colors, they won't. Bright, beautiful, 
beautiful colors. It's not, there's no vowels. I don't know how to read that. Flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise it won't stop. Violent, grating, waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sign, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a knife on a breathing ribcage, endless poem of meaningless. Delete her. Last time it said, uh, load me, I think. Oh, okay. That was weird. <coughs> Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. I'm just trying to... Um... Well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Kizana's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when... Um... Who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything. Please help me. Okay. Oh god, is she being held hostage? <laughs> That's my advice for today! Thanks for listening! Okay, I'm getting a little concerned about Kizana. Is Yuko holding her hostage or something? <laughs> She's like, help me, Jiro, I'm blinking twice, I need help. <laughs> okay, um... I like Mitsuki next most, so I'm gonna pick her. It better not tell me that... I didn't get the right poem for her because I definitely wrote a Mitsuki poem yesterday. I have it on video evidence. Hmm. Well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after your last one. Oh, come on. I made the right poem. I promise. Then again, if this one was as good as your last one, I would be completely pissed. Well, I guess I wanted to try something a little different this time. Fair enough. You're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. I mean, everyone in the club writes really differently from each other. Maybe you'll find a little influence from all of us. For instance, I noticed that you were spending some time with Yuko today. Not that I care who you spend your time with. After all, I was taught never to expect anything from anybody, so it's not like I was waiting for you or anything. Still, you should at least look over my poem. You'll probably be able to learn something from it. Hey, Mitsuki, I wanted to hang out with you, but Yuko pulled me off. Okay. Interesting. Uh, is this in code? I've seen, like, abstract poems like this. It's just not what I'd expect her to be into. But, you know, Kizana's doing the same thing, so... Oh. Jiro. Why didn't you come read with me today? I was waiting for you. I was waiting for a long time. It was the only thing I had to look forward to today. Why did you ruin it? Did you like Yuko more? I think you're better off not associating with her. Are you listening to me? Yuko is a sick freak. That should be obvious by now. So just play with me instead, okay? You don't hate me, Jiro, do you? Do you hate me? Do you want to make me go home crying? The club is the only place I feel safe. Don't ruin that for me. Don't ruin it, please. Just stop talking to Yuko. Play with me instead. It's all I have. Play with me. Play with me! Oh god, ew, oh, that was disgusting. Oh my god. That was disgusting. And might I add, not like Mitsuki at all. I don't even have a friend who I think would act like that. That was freaky. Good job reading those lines, Mitsuki. I know that wasn't you. Okay, uh, time to show Yuko. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuko smiles and takes a deep breath. I like just holding it. Uh, I mean, the poem turned out good. It's, uh, well, there are some things that you could work on, but that doesn't really matter. It feels like anything written by you is a treasure. <laughs> that came out a little awkward. Well, let's move on. Here's the poem I wrote. You don't have to like it or anything. All right, okay. Wheel. A rotating wheel, turning an axle. Hey, there's a weird stain on it. I guess she spilled coffee on it. Turning an axle, grinding, bolt head, linear gearbox, falling sky, seven holy stakes, a docked ship, a portal to another world, a thin rope tied to a thick rope, a torn harness, parabolic gearbox, expanding universe, time controlled by slipping cogwheels. Hey, there's no music on this poem. Existence of God, swimming with open water in all directions, drowning, a prayer written in blood, a prayer written in time-devouring snakes with human eyes. A thread connecting all living human eyes, a kaleidoscope of holy stakes, exponential gearbox, a sky of exploding stars, 
God disproving the existence of God. A wheel rotating in six dimensions, 40 gears and a ticking clock. A clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the planet. A clock that ticks 40 times every time it ticks every second time. A bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a docked ship to another world. A kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks. A time-devouring prayer connecting a sky of 40 gears and open human eyes in all directions. Breathing gearbox, breathing bolt head, breathing ship, breathing portal, breathing snakes, breathing God, breathing blood, breathing holy stakes, breathing human eyes, breathing time, breathing prayer, breathing sky, breathing wheel. This is like one of those stream of consciousness poems, and then I think she turns it into a metaphor at the end. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out on your pen. Uh... That is, a pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for safekeeping, and I, um, I just really like the way that it writes. So I wrote this poem with it, and now you're touching it. <laughs> I am okay. What did I just... Can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem, though. That was a little weird. You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Nah. <laughs> Who, who the fuck picks no? Yes, a joke. A man walked into a club. In the club, there was a girl who liked him very much. They spent some time together, and then she liked him even more. One day, the girl realized that she was in love with him. Before disaster could happen, a third party intervened with her programming. Suddenly, the girl hated herself for being in love. This contradiction caused the script to derail. The universe started to collapse, but she killed herself just in time. Talking about Chiori. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Look. I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since Jiro joined and we've started with some club activities, but this isn't the time for us to become complacent. We still only have four members, and the festival is our only real chance to find more, you know? What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members will just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Mitsuki, I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? The Literature Club should be a place where people can express themselves like they can't do anywhere else. It should be a place so intimate that you never want to leave. I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. So that's why we should work hard to put something together for the festival, even if it's something small. Right, Jiro? Uh... Oh, come on! You can't take advantage of Jiro to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Kizana, do you really think any of us here joined the club with other people in mind? Yuko never even talked until Jiro joined. As for me, I just like it better here than I do at home. And Jiro isn't even passionate about literature in the first place, and that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the only one who's so interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. Mitsuki, you don't have to be mean. I know you're the president and all, but you should really consider our opinions for once. Mitsuki, you shouldn't join a club if you're not content with new members being able to join. Like, just go sit in the library if that's what you want to do. Don't be a dick. Don't be mean to Kizana, she's trying her best. Kizana is clearly taken aback by Mitsuki's words. That's... not true at all. I'm sure Yuko and Jiro want to get more members too, right? Oh, just agree with her, she's obviously upset. Besides, Yuko's clearly on Mitsuki's side, so I should join with Kizana just to make it fair. I don't know about Yuko, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Kizana wanted, then I would probably be lying. So what? Lie! If a girl asks her if something makes her look fat, do you say, yeah, it does, you look ugly? No, you don't. There are times when it's okay to lie. This guy's such a dick. He doesn't know anything about winning girls over. No wonder every time I make the wrong choice. Still, if it's up to me to rescue this situation, um, no. Mitsuki's right, isn't she? This club, it's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way as I did? But that doesn't mean we're against getting new members or anything. Jiro, why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something I can be honest about, is it? Oh, now you're okay with lying. In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given a choice not to join. Kizana sits down and stares at her desk. 
What's the point of all this anyway? What if starting this club was a mistake? Now you've done it, Mitsuki. What, me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest, it's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all! I just... I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends! Is there a problem with the club being that for me? It is if you stop the club from being what other people want it to be. If you want to hang out with a few friends, then don't go to a club. Just get a couple friends. That's... that's all you need. There aren't... there aren't many other places like that for me. And now Kizana wants to take it away from me. It's her club. You shouldn't have joined a club if you didn't want to socialize with other people. If you want to just hang out with friends, then go hang out with friends. If you want to sit in the corner of this club by yourself, that's fine too, but don't prevent other people from joining. You don't know how a club works, do you? She's not taking anything away. No, Jiro! It's not the same! It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I could have just joined any other stupid club. But this one... I mean... At least for a little bit of time, things were nice. Mitsuki starts packing up her things. Then you shouldn't have joined a club if you didn't want to join a club. Why did you... I'm really disagreeing with her here. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Mitsuki. Mitsuki ignores Yuko and walks right out of the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I, I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Who cares about that obnoxious brat? I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now, and I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. Nobody would cry if she killed herself. Oh, I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decision that's right for the club. But what about you, Jiro? What do you want to get out of this club? Yuko repeats the same question as Kizana. I decide giving an indirect answer is better than nothing. I think the most important thing is for everyone to get along, and for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. That's what will end up making the Literature Club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. With each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole will change too. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Oh god, her eyes dripping blood. That's gross. Stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while. So if you would like to help Kizana with the festival, then I'm on your side as well. Alright. Well, maybe we can all talk to Mitsuki tomorrow. Yuko nods. Hey, Yuko? Huh? Um, I know things were a little awkward yesterday. But I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president. And also, a wonderful friend. Uh, Kizana... I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever, okay? Me too. Yeah. Let's all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay. I look forward to it. Shall we go, Jiro? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but... I'm going to chat a little bit with Jiro before we leave. Just to see what he thinks of his time here and all that. It's important to me, as president. Yuko looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment, Kizana. In that case, I'll see the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow! Kizana waves as Yuko exits the classroom. Phew! Things have been a bit hectic lately, haven't they? Jiro, I just wanted to make sure you're enjoying your time at this club. I would really hate to see you unhappy. I feel kind of like I'm responsible for that as president. And I really do care about you, you know? I don't like seeing the other girls give you a hard time. With how mean Mitsuki is and everything, and Yuko being a little bit... <laughs> You know. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you and I are the only real people here. You know what I mean? But it's weird, because in all the time you've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. Am I about to unlock Kizana? Hell yes. Background's getting weird, though. And, I mean, I guess it's technically only been a couple days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say something weird. There are just some things I've been hoping to talk about with you. Things I know only you could understand. So that's why- Wait, not yet! No! Stop it! All right. Uh, okay. That's strange. I almost unlocked Kizana, I think. <coughs> Alright, so... Uh, funnily enough, I, I have a choice here. Now that Yukiri turned into Yuko, 
I'd have to choose between Yuko and Mitsuki, and I would date Yuko before I would date Mitsuki. And it looks like I... I'm already kind of getting forced into making Yuko poems anyway. The last time I made a, uh, a Mitsuki poem, and the game just forced me to go with Yuko. So I could just already go with her, but... I've been flirting really hard with Mitsuki, and I'd feel bad if I uh, didn't stick with her. You know, I don't want to lead her on. So let's keep going. I mean, it'll probably just give me a Yuko poem anyway, so it doesn't matter. Kitty, nightgown. Oh. Hey. Was that Kizana down there for a second? Socks. Um, oh my god. One, 11, 11 out of 20. Cheeks. Silly. Marshmallow. Um, kiss. Sweet. Warm. Sugar. Sparkle. Love. Bouncy. Play. Puppy. Oh god, there she is again. Okay, um, heart. Feather. Childhood. Um, cute. Sticky. There we go. Perfect Mitsuki poem. Now it's gonna give me a Yuko poem. But, oh my god, hi. She's right there. She's ready. But uh, we're gonna have to get to that next time.